Hi again. Uh, here we are to continue our discussion of JavaScript and and you know basic JavaScript, and we're you know we're making this uh, shopping cart here. Let's uh, take a look at what we have so far. So so far we've got a shopping cart, and it totals the or gives us the total count of items in the cart. Um, we can add items to the cart, and if we add an item more than once, you know it increases the quantity. And then, um, you know, it also totals the prices of the item in the cart. And this is calculated as the quantity times the price, right, for each item. Um, we're having a little bit of weirdness here with the numbers. And basically in JavaScript, um, you know, the numbers behind the scenes are kept track of in, um, in binary form, right? They're just ones and zeros, right? But uh, those numbers count a little bit differently than our numbers do in decimal form, right? And so you're going to run into this situation where a number that seems like you should be able to add it up um, to, you know, a decimal number, but it'll end up with a string of like 0.999 or sometimes it'll be like 0.3000000004, you know, um, that actually, but it actually, trust me, it makes sense in, in digital form, right? Or in, in binary, right? But how do we deal with that, right? Like, what are we going to do? Because we can't, we can't show numbers like this. Nobody would want to pay that, right? How do we calculate the payment on that total problem, right? So what are we going to do? Well, what we can do is we can take any number, and I've got total right here. And any number, if you, if you call the dot to fixed method on it, you can pass in the number of decimal places that you'd like to round that number off to, okay? So if I say number dot two fixed, and I put two here, it'll round that number off to two decimal places. Now, here's a little note about two fixed. Two fixed returns a string, so it actually converts the number here into a string. So this should be the very last step you take before you display a number. So we should leave our numbers in number format and do all of our math. And that is the very last step when we're about to display it. Let's convert it to a fixed number of decimal places and to a string with two fixed. So I've, I've added this here because this is right where I'm displaying the number. And then when I refresh it, you can see it rounds that off to 15.49, okay? And you know, we could use that in, in a few places, right? So that's looking pretty good. Let's go over our code really quick and uh, let's talk about ways that we can improve the code that we have here, okay? So first of all, we've got the code organized into functions and that's a great way to work, right? So we have functions that do things. I like what I have here, but what I'd like to do is actually um, move this quantity or total quantity into its own function and this thing that gets the total price i'd like to move that into its own function too and that it's better to have um more shorter functions than you know fewer larger functions usually okay sometimes you got to have a long function that does something but a lot of times it's better and more flexible to have a couple shorter functions so a shorter function is easier for you to reason about and look at and say like what's going on in here you know like how does this work and if you need to change it it's easier for you to make changes if you have single large functions it's very hard to work with those because you have to read through lots of code to figure out what's going on and if you want to use them in different places like they're very inflexible they just do the one thing that they do if you have smaller functions you could just use one of the smaller functions right if you needed part of the the functionality right Okay, let's move this um, quantity function out of here. And let's talk a little bit more about how functions work. I'm going to add a new function to the bottom. So now remember, you know, show items begins here with this curly brace and it ends at this curly brace. So I, I got to make sure when I add my new function that it's outside of those curly braces, right? So I'll say function, I'm going to say get quantity. Okay, and uh, I'm going to cut this block of code here, okay? We're going to come back here because this, if I leave this here, I'll get an error saying like, hey, quantity is undefined, right? Um, so we're going to have to come back and look at that, right? And I'm going to paste, you know, let quantity equal zero and then the for loop right here, okay? So this function now generates the quantity, but when we declare quantity here with let quantity, 
this declares the scope of quantity to this block. Okay, so scope is a term in software where it says where a, a, a value is visible. Okay, so in other words, the, this, this particular quantity variable is only visible in this block. So when you use the keyword let, that it has a block scope, and that means that this thing is scoped to the block that currently contains it. When we use let on the I here, it's scoped to the block of this for loop. So things that are outside of a block, like if this one's outside the for loop, it's actually available inside the block, but the I variable is not available outside of its block. Okay, so so variables can look inward into the block, but they can't, or into their scope, but they can't look outward. So the quantity variable scoped to this block, but it's not available in the block up here. Okay, so the quantity up here is not the same quantity, or it's not available, right? So how do we work with that? Well, functions provide the return keyword, and we talked about that earlier, right? And it ends your function, so that's one thing that return does, it ends a function. So as soon as you get to return, it ends, right? The function just stops right there. It doesn't do anything else, okay? Um, but return also lets you send a value back to where the function was called from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put return here, and I'm going to return the quantity value. So I'm going to say that the get quantity function returns the quantity. Okay, so whenever I want the quantity in my shopping cart, I can return it, right? So I'll say return here. And now if I was to call a quantity up here, I could say get quantity. And to run the function, I got to follow it with the parentheses, right? Now get quantity doesn't take any parameters, right? So functions can take in parameters and they can also return values. Okay, so if I call get quantity up here, it runs the code inside this function, declares the quantity variable, runs through the for loop, and then it returns the total quantity. And then the value that's returned will be replaced here. If you want, you could make a variable, I could say const quantity equals get quantity like this, and then I could print this quantity here, oops, um, there, right? Okay, so uh, here I'm declaring a brand new quantity variable that will be set to the value that was returned from this function and then printed here. Let's save that and see what happens, right? Oh, there we go. So I got, you have seven items in your cart and I've got the correct quantity, right? Let's do the same thing with the total, okay? So I'll leave that for you to do. That'll be a challenge. You can give it a try. You can stop the video here, write yourself a new function called get total, and use that to generate the total here, okay? So give that a try, and then you can come back, and I'll go through the solution. Okay, so how did you do? Did you figure it out? Um, let's go over it. I'm going to write another function here called get uh, total. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this block of code here, right? So the let total and the for loop, right? And again, this total variable will now be undefined. So I'll get an error or it'll show undefined if I try to run the code now. Um, but I'm going to paste the code here and make sure when we write this function it doesn't end up inside the curly braces for another function. And um, so now I've got my total here. I'm going to loop through my cart. I'm going to calculate the total from the quantity and the price. And then I'll return the total. And I think actually what would be good for us here is I'm going to return the total and include dot two fixed here. It seems like a reasonable assumption that if I if I um, if I call get total that it'll return the formatted total or the total like formatted to two decimal places, right? That may not be a good assumption. It depends on how we're going to use this, but I think I'm going to do this here, and it'll just make it easier for me to work with the total. 
Okay, so now I've got my function here that's get total. Let's actually put a couple comments in here, right? So I'll do get uh, total. So I'm just gonna. This will just remind me like where each one of these functions starts, right? And this one will be. <coughs> show item <coughs> show items pardon me and now um, over here where it says console log I no longer have the total here so I'm gonna get rid of that and what I'll do is and again we could um, we could get the quantity here and put it in a variable and then show it down here or I could call the function itself inside the um, the curly brackets and what it'll do is it'll print the value that was returned from the function call and you gotta um, include the parentheses to actually invoke the function okay so I, I did it this way the first time where I I created an intermediate variable that stored the value returned from the function and then I printed that value here and this time I'll just call the function directly and and print the value here Okay, let's give it a try. Oh, so it looks like everything's working, right? Okay, oops, uh, there we go, right? So I'll, I'll refresh that. Um, so that looks pretty good. I don't know why sometimes it doesn't print the whole thing. I don't know what there, you know. I don't know. My browser is not, probably because I'm using Safari there. And this time it doesn't. Okay, so um, I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, um, there we go. Hey, let's talk about a couple other ways that we can improve our, our code, okay? So let's take a look at the add item function and this line right here, okay? So there's a little shortcut we can take is if we have a variable that has the same name as a key we don't have to put them both here and you can see we actually have that twice so I've got name and then the value is name and then I got price is the key and the variable that contains the value that we want here is in a variable called price right so let's uh, let's try a little experiment at the top what if I made a new variable here called object right and I set it equal to an empty object right and then I'm gonna um, console log object here right and to make this like totally visible I'll, um, I'll also log after this I'll put a, uh, a line of these stars underneath it right so if I look here you can see there's the empty object and then there's the stars okay what if I had another variable here like I had constant oops, uh, constant and I made it a variable called a and I gave it a value of 999 okay if I wanted to give my object here a key of a and a value that was you know 999 I could do this right a and a and then if I refresh it here, you can see A is 199. So A, and then there was the variable A, right? Okay, here's a shortcut. If I just put A here, then JavaScript will say like, hey, you know, you've got an object and you're trying to set the value here. And what I'll do is when you have a variable in the spot, I'll use the name of the variable as the key and the value of the variable as the value. Right, so you don't have to do the colon, right? So I don't have to do this. I can just say A by itself. And if I do that, you can see I get the same output here. And you can try this. Why don't you just, you know, if, if it seems a little strange, do this. Make a few of these variables, you know, until, you know, just keep making them, right? You know, like maybe I'll do a, a hello and uh, I'll do const D equals uh, world like this and oops wait it better put that in quotation marks right and now if I do a uh, B and C and D when I refresh here you'll see a has a value of 999 B has a value of 888 C has a value of hello and D has a value of world 
And these could be any name. So if I wanted to say, you know, um, how about uh, greeting is hello, right? And place is world. Now, keys and variable names can't have any special characters in them. So you can't say place or, you know, place here or something, right? It's got to just be um, just letters and numbers, right? And it can't start with a number. It has to start with a letter, okay? So uh, let's move that down a little bit and move this up a little bit here. And then I can see everything. And when I refresh it here, oops, um, oh, can't find variable. See, I forgot. So I put a C here. I'm going to get an error because I changed this to greeting. But if I put the greeting here and the place here, right now I've got these two variables there and they'll have keys of greeting and keys of place and values of hello and place will be value of world, right? Okay. Oh, there we go. So I've got A is 999, B is 888, greeting is hello and place is world, right? So uh, why do we want to do that? Well, you know what? If I, let me delete all that now, right? Uh, instead of saying name is name, I can shorten that to name. Instead of saying price is price, I can shorten that. Now, quantity has to stay the same because it doesn't have a value unless you defined it up above here, right? So I'll just leave quantity colon of one, right? And then if I refresh here, it should still work, right? So everything looks the same, okay? So anyway, so thanks for watching and um, I hope that's interesting and I hope this you're getting a lot out of this JavaScript stuff. Please, if you have any comments or questions, like post them to the comments, okay? Thanks.